So today we're going to talk about two uh, interesting versions of how to take agent-based models and add additional componentry to them. In the first case, we're going to talk about participatory simulation or adding the ability for humans to interact with your agent-based model. And in the second case, we're going to talk about mixing agent-based models with system dynamics models, uh, which is a different form of modeling. Um, and so let's start with participatory simulation. So participatory simulation is the idea that you can create a simulation that has both human agents and simulated agents operating side by side. In NetLogo in particular, this is implemented via the HubNet uh, protocol, which we're going to explore a little bit when we get to the examples. Uh, for instance, in the HubNet disease model, you can have automatic um, disease agents or disease vectors going around, and then you can have um, humans that are being controlled by other, human, by other humans going around as well, and you can see how they might interact with each other. Or um, there's a game called the root beer game, in which case you can have humans making decisions about what kind, how, many, how much root beer to order and then observe the dynamics from that. Right? Now, when creating a HubNet mark, arch, model, the thing you have to remember is that there is the basic architecture is such that one computer will serve as the server, the host. All the other computers have to be on the same local network. Um, and other computers or terminals connect to this computer in a client host, uh, client server type architecture, right? Um, and in, in this particular case, they, usually you would want these to be on different machines so that everybody has their own machine. We've hosted quite a few um, clients on a single machine. But you could also have the case that if you're just playing around with it, getting it set up on your own, that you simply use your own machine, your own uh, computer for both the client and the host. There's basically three steps you need to program. You need to initialize HubNet, and we'll talk about HubNet reset and how that works. You then need to listen to clients, um, and there you can basically ask if the server has received a message, and if it has, you can grab that message. And then you can process that message, and there's a number of different messages you can process. This, you know, some standard kind of maintenance ones are HubNet enter and HubNet exit, which indicate that a client is either entering the HubNet um, simulation or exiting. Um, the source, so you might want to know what's, what's the source of the message. The tag, and so you can attach tags, and then what the actual HubNet message itself is, right? Um, often, you do this by mapping a particular client in the HubNet world to a turtle that's in your model. So for instance, in the disease model, each client represents a, a human who's moving around, a potential host of the disease as they're moving around. And this is often done by setting a turtle's own variable. So you create an ID, right, for each of these different um, human agents that matches the ID, the HubNet ID that's given to them. You then need some programmatic way to send messages from the host to the client. Um, so this is if you want to give feedback, like you're going the wrong direction, or you know the you know different kinds of elements as to what the, how well they're doing in the game, um, and so you can do HubNet send for that. You can also customize what a client sees, um, and this can be done either by forcing the client's view to follow a particular agent in in the HubNet graphic, or by doing what's called a client override, which actually involves like blocking out parts of the screen. Um, so that the, uh, the world, so that the client can only see those particular parts. Um, this class, unfortunately, isn't long enough to go into all the different ways it is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, um, in the next little bit, I'm going to actually jump into the disease model and kind of show you a little bit step by step how this actually works uh, in, in that model. Okay, so um, I've opened up uh, the NetLogo uh, Models Library. Actually, I already opened up Disease Hub. That's in the background. But just to show you where it is, if you look in the Models Library, right, and you scan down, there's a section called HubNet Activities. Right? If you go down there, you'll see a whole bunch of them. And the one we're going to look at today is Disease HubNet, which is probably uh, one of the easier ones to understand. So you can go ahead and open, right, it'll open it up, and you'll notice right away it pops up this HubNet control center over here, right? And that's gonna that's essentially the server control for the model, right? Now, disease was actually set up to be used by a, um, a teacher in a classroom setting, so there's some really detailed instructions. If you want, you can actually look through and read them all, right? But I'll take you through it a little bit specifically. Um, 
So let's just talk about how this actually looks, right? So right now, if we were to hit setup, nothing were to happen because we haven't added any clients to the model. So there's no one to control. So we can either add clients in one of two ways. We can just create a, a local client, right? And this is just our own um, local thing, especially useful for testing, but this won't appear on anyone else's computer, right? Um, we'd have to actually get them. Or if you're on another computer, you can go to the same NetLogo window, NetLogo directory where NetLogo is, and you'll find the HubNet client. And you can load that up. And if you're on the same local network at all, you can just type in the your name, first of all, and then the server name address, which is displayed up here in the HubNet control center window. Um, so once you do that, right, I can now add in. So I now have these two clients, local two and bill. Now, if I hit setup um, and hit go, right, they show up right in the model right away, right? Um, and if we go back, right, they're both there, right? And now I can actually move these these two, one of these agents around actually using, I can either click, right? Or I can actually just use the keys. So they map IJKL. By the way, this is a cool little feature in NetLogo. This is, um, it's done by setting a hotkey for any of the particular buttons, right? Um, and so I can move that around, right? And then I can go over and click on this one. I can do the same thing, right? Now, if just two of us, it's not very interesting. We can throw in a bunch of Androids and the Androids just kind of randomly move around the world, right? And then finally, to really get the sense of why it's called disease, we can infect one of the androids, right? And then we could try as we were, as, as much as we could to avoid the android, right? So try with the blue dog to avoid, let's see if we can avoid the yellow dog as well, and so forth, right? And you can kind of explore, like, how does the number of androids affect uh, the, the simulation? How do people interact with this disease propagation model, right? So that's the basic model. It's a very simple model. Oh, both of my... Uh, clients have been infected now, uh, but it gives you an idea of kind of what HubNet allows you to do, right? So let me stop the simulation and go into the actual code. Okay, so let's flip over to the code. Actually, let me hit, let's turn off go, right? And in the actual code, the first thing you want to look up is what's called the startup routine. And if you remember from some of our earlier discussions, startup actually runs when the model starts up, regardless of whether or not you've clicked any buttons. It's when the model actually loads. And the first thing it does is issue a HubNet reset command, just indicating we are gonna use the HubNet platform, reset everything. It then does some things about setting up the variables, setting up how you know the quick start so everything can get going. Um, that's all fine and dandy, and it does the reset ticks, right? So then let's look at what actually happens in um, an everyday, uh, in an instance of the Go loop. And the first thing that you'll notice is listen clients which we'll go into in the next detail. But then there's this every 0.1, and every 0.1 just means to schedule something so it happens every tenth of a second, essentially, right? And every tenth of a second, there's going to be this wander function that happens with the androids, and we're gonna count the number of trails we've infected and stuff like that, right? But the important part for HubNet is this listen clients procedure. So let's look down at that. So what does listen clients says? Well, listen clients says, if there is a message waiting, what's a while my HubNet message waiting is true, Right? Then fetch the message, and if it's an enter message, create a new student. If it's an exit message, uh, remove that student from the class. Otherwise, the standard is, or remove the student from the simulation. Um, ask the students whose user ID matches the HubNet message source. So again, HubNet enter message is going to, HubNet create a new student, is going to match an ID to the particular um, source of the ID. And then, you know, so find those students and then execute this command on those students. So that, of course, now we should look at execute command. What does execute command does? Execute command says, if you're going to go up, then execute move, down, execute move 180, so forth, so forth. Uh, you can change the appearance so that you look like a different character and so forth. So what does execute move do? Well, execute move basically sets the heading to whatever that heading was, so up is zero, uh, right is 90, down is 180, left is 270, so move in that direction and then move, right? All the agents in, um, in disease are non-rotatable, which means that they don't rotate to follow their heading. So we're just moving in those directions, right, to look at. And you'll notice it also does a HubNet send, 
back to the client to indicate where um, the the um, agent actually is, right? So the blue dog is at two, and remember zero zero is at the middle, or two, negative five, right? Um, so this kind of gives you an example of how you can use hub, all the HubNet features together. Um, and in this particular model, there's one last thing that just checks to see if I should be infected. Um, and it basically says, if I am infected, I should spread the disease. If there are other trolls over here, then maybe I get sick based upon the transmission probability. Right? So I just want to give you a quick dabble with how to, you might want to set up your uh, HubNet um, simulations if you're interested in doing that. I highly recommend, if you are interested in doing this, to kind of really dive into one of the RA pre-built models like disease and understand what it's doing. So that's it for participatory simulations.